Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. I hope you all are ready for another extended version of In The Loop. Today we are talking about elections results. When might we see them? Is anything changing about the way they're reported? And when do they become official? But before we dive deep into all of that, I want to remind you of some important dates coming up here in Ohio. So in just a few days on Monday, October 5th is the deadline to register to vote. And if you voted in any recent elections, you're probably set, but it never hurts to check and is really easy to do on VoteOhio.gov. Then early voting starts the very next day, Tuesday, October 6th. And for most counties, you just go to your county board of elections, but Lucas and Summit have their very own early voting centers. And if you're voting absentee, request that ballot by October 31st. Spooky. At the very latest, but Rose said that realistically, you should try to get that in no later than October 27th. Then when you actually get your ballot and you fill it all out, it needs to be returned by November 3rd, which is election day at 7.30 or postmarked by November 2nd. If you have that postmarked, it can be received up to 10 days after the election and still be counted. So it's November 3rd, your vote is in. What happens now? According to Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose, when his office reports votes on election night, those are the unofficial results, which has always been the case. But this year he said they might be a little bit more unofficial than usual. Regardless of how a vote is cast, everyone that comes in by 7.30 p.m. on election day is reported. In a usual election, those unofficial results come out late Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Now, why aren't those numbers official? Well, part of it is, like I said, the absentee ballots have 10 days after the election to actually be received, as long as they are, again, postmarked for the day before election day. Usually the margin in votes isn't so close that the number of ballots arriving after election night would change anything, but this year, with up to half of Ohioans expected to vote by mail, those late arriving votes could easily make a difference in the outcome. So while in most years the projected results on election night are really reliable, this year's might only give us a bit of the picture. And according to Ohio law, after the 10-day period for ballots to arrive at the boards of elections, the next time the Secretary of State's office is able to report a result is when the final certification happens, which LaRoe is said to be three weeks after the election. But again, this is nothing new. What is new is the sheer volume of votes that may come through the mail, and we don't know exactly when all of them might be received. So will election night be chaos? How will we know if any of those votes that haven't been received yet will make a difference? Well, Secretary of State Frank LaRose is adding a bit of information on the VoteOhio.gov website that should make things a little bit more clear. The Secretary of State website will be upgraded so the potentially large number of absentee ballots that haven't come in yet will be clearly visible on election night. LaRose said that reporting that number is designed to make it abundantly clear if one candidate has defeated another or if more counting is needed. He explained it like this. If a candidate wins by four or five or six percent in Ohio and there's only a couple hundred thousand outstanding ballots, then chances are we will know what the final results will be on election night. But if it's close and you see that there's still a large number of outstanding ballots, then we probably need to wait. But both candidates have raised concerns about rigging and election fraud. So what happens if the results are contested? Well, even if the election is messy, the country will have a president on January 20th. So let's look at what happens after election night. First of all, states have more than a month to count those ballots, but states' electoral votes have to be cast on December 14th. And when the electors meet, a candidate who gets at least 270 of the 538 electoral votes wins. But what happens if election issues prevent a winner from actually being named? Well, let's look at our handy dandy constitution. According to the 12th amendment, if that happens, the House elects the president and the Senate elects a VP. And to be clear, that would all be chosen by the new Congress that enters in January, as some of those seats are up as well. But of course, they can't just choose anyone they want. In the House, they have to pick among the three people with the most electoral votes. So each state delegation gets one vote and 26 votes are needed to bring home the victory. For the Senate, the choice is between the top two with electoral votes and every senator gets a vote, meaning 51, of course, to win. A president has only been chosen this way once, and that was back in 1825 with John Quincy Adams. So it's been a hot minute since we've gone through that here. But what if that somehow falls through and the House hasn't picked someone by Inauguration Day? That's when the 20th Amendment swoops in, saying the vice president-elect acts as president until a real president is picked. But what if no VP is selected either? Well. 
then the Presidential Succession Act applies, meaning the Speaker of the House, the Senate President, or a Cabinet Officer in that order would act as President until there finally is a President or Vice President. Of course, those are a lot of what-ifs, but it is 2020, so who knows what could happen. Why not arm yourself with knowledge, and of course, don't forget to go vote. But that is all I have for you today. For more on what we talked about, check out the link in the description of this video. And if you liked this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop on election results.